Alright you guys going everybody? Welcome back to the Tyler Crips YouTube channel. My name is Tyler. Hope you all are having a blessed day. Uh, this is the second episode of the 19, uh, late 1950s uh, Massey Ferguson Super 35 Combine. I believe it's a Super 35. It might just be 35, but I think it's Super. Um, but uh, we're just going to jump right into it. If you haven't seen the last video, it'll be in the description and there will be a little card somewhere that I'll put in. Uh, and you can go watch that the intro video but uh, we're gonna jump right into it so um i tried doing some research and i thought this was a six volt system because it's got a six volt coil but then i looked up the uh i looked up the generator that's on it and supposedly on ebay I'm not sure if it's a six volt generator or if it's been converted at some point in its life because you know for being in the 1950s it's uh, actually quite a high chance that it's been converted somehow in some way so i don't know but uh, I don't have anywhere else to start, but I'm just gonna throw the battery up there and see what happens I know I could damage some things, but I just want to see if it cranks over. I want to see I want to see what happens So uh, I gotta start somewhere. Uh, I did use my Black & Decker uh, thingy there. Jump starter, charger, air inflator to pump up this tire Which I can't believe it held there. It's got a tube inside of it, but uh, This tire, I was seeing if I could find the dot code so I could see how old it is. Oh, that popped at some point That was not like that when I came when I was out here, I can't read. The other one is the dot number is 6412, which means 196. I believe it's 1964, the 12th week. So, so I again, like I said, I don't know if this is six volts or 12 volts because the alternator might be a 12 volt alternator, but the coil is six volts. And also, something I forgot to mention, I looked at the points, they do look like brand new points. Um, so you're going to have negative to ground, connect positive first. Hopefully this thing's not in gear and doesn't try just taking off or something crazy. Okay, we don't have any draw from anything. What else makes me think this has been changed up is these battery cables don't look that old. If they were from the 1950s, again, they would be not in great shape. Uh, I'm going to get up here and see I don't know what I'm doing so <laughs> upside and was it's fine it... how so... come what how come you don't look at the camera when you're talking I don't know I just I'm, I'm just asking oh, you like I'm this just, like, I'm just looking randomly at stuff um, you're supposed to narrate to the your, your people oh they're being narrated to does this have pinch and zoom? That. No. Bring that over here. I tried to almost try to pitch the speed. That would make it focus. Uh, I forgot. I think this tarp was originally used to cover this. I'll actually take this off too. Uh, the fuel is disgusting. I'm not going to run it like... I'm not like... Burr, burr, burr. I mean, I may like run it, burr, burr, but not, you know, for a long period of time. But I got to take that off or else bad juju will happen. I'm pretty sure it kicked, so I don't actually think the engine's froze. Usually when they're froze up, it's like the Bindex kicks out and nothing happens, so. Okay, the starter is not, I don't, so, so. I'll I, tell you if it cranks over. I don't know how this thing works if it won't. Because it's a combine, it's going to be possibly different than a car we're in that a car if it was an automatic transmission i don't know how that works no uh, if it's in stick shift it's in neutral is it the bit it's not kicking like it should yeah the solenoid's not working right uh maybe i'll bring you guys up here real quick do you want me to do it and you can no i can i can show them right here so the uh the uh you don't want me to kick no no not while i'm in here wouldn't do it right there. It could. It might turn on. That's the starter right there. I'm thinking maybe it's super rusty. It's it's super rusty. So, so I'm gonna you, pop some of these. Hammer? No, I just don't. Tap it. I'm just gonna pop those loose and then tighten them back up to clear off some corrosion. So on that solenoid right there. We'll see if that fixes it. Also, I don't know what this is for. It's quite sharp. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is a couple days later, but I wanted to put it in the first video because uh, I just felt the need to. The video is kind of a hard video for me to make. Um, I want to say that I am completely new to all this. While I've watched days worth of YouTube videos on farming, um, 
it's different when you're actually doing it. I would like to remind everyone that, that you can watch a lifetime of content, but it amounts to very little when you're actually doing it because you're actually doing it and you have your own challenges that the video may not have covered. Um, so you all know that I am in the business of doing whatever I want with this YouTube channel. Uh, whatever random things come my way, that's kind of the gist of this channel is whatever, whatever, whatever happens, whatever happens. Um, and uh, uh, I'm considering farming. I'm not quite sure yet. I do like farming. I think it is quite a cool concept and thing to do and it is, it's something that really humanity has been founded on, you know. I'm a Christian, Adam and Eve are farmers, probably in every way you could imagine. Uh, and farming pretty much made America as well. Just the industrial overall farming and everything else. Um, uh, and it, it's kind of what makes the world go round and it's not really that bad of a thing. I mean, it can kind of be repetitive, but um, I'm hoping maybe I can throw some different things into it and try some different things because it seems like trying things in the world nowadays isn't really a thing anymore. Everyone just kind of sticks to the book and doesn't really experiment. So I ended up downloading the manuals for this thing. I got the owner's manual and the parts manual, uh, PDF versions for about 57 bucks. So a pretty good price for both manuals. I have all the stuff I could ever want to know about this combine. Um, but uh, I'm also aware that this is a very big undertaking and uh, you know I'm also in the business of big undertakings. Many people would not have even attempted to revive my truck and all the other things I have done as well. I'm, uh, you could say I'm in the field of work of dealing with things that have been long forgotten <laughs> um, but I think those things are going to be end, end up being the things that save us uh, because it seems like all the stuff nowadays is kind of falling apart uh, because of all the electronics. As you can tell 1950s there's maybe one thing on this that's rusted through so I just that you know just something that, to think about but uh, yeah so um, anyways uh, back to the video just wanted to say uh, I'm trying my best so thank y'all <laughs> okay everybody just got done filming a little clip for the previous video you've already seen it if you've watched the whole video if you didn't watch the whole video go watch it and drop a like um, dropping a like really has helped me out uh, my videos are getting quite a bit of views, uh, over 40, but I'm only getting one like for per 40 views. So if y'all could like the video, uh, it really does help me out. But um, continuing on, I've done some research on the six volt system here because that's the main thing stopping me. I don't really want to go buy a hundred dollar. I'm kind of, it's like I could buy a hundred dollar battery. I could buy a hundred dollar conversion kit or I could get the generator converted to 12 volts for a hundred dollars. So I have lots of different avenues here that I could go through. Um, but we're just going to forget all that right now. Um, in learning, the manual does say this thing is a positive ground. According to the internet, it was thought to reduce corrosion. So I'm not sure how this works, but that grounding strap is 12 volts. I don't know. It's it's 1950 stuff. I don't know, I don't care. I try not to question it. I just try to work through what some dude was thinking back then, whatever, just keep going there's lots of junk nowadays people do that's way more whack so um, but uh, unless this thing in all of its years today we're gonna be pulling the starter and the generator off um, it does get power so the, the starter does kick out but I had it hooked up wrong um, so I think what I might do real quick is plug the battery in uh, re reversed and see if uh, I can just get the starter to kick and then I'm gonna take it out anyways oh I no, I'm not gonna do that because I already took the start to take the starter out but um, we're gonna take those two things out and go from there because I need to take the generator out anyways and I don't really want to go with six volts I'd like to have 12 volt stuff on this and I'd like to say for all maybe the older timer people on here or younger people this is not your conventional restoration my channel has never been about that um, uh, if you can't do what you want with it then it's not really yours that's kind of my thing um, I, I say that in different ways but this is my combine, uh, it's from the 1950s and I'm gonna do what I want with it. I hope to maybe put LEDs on it and, and modify some things. Uh, so I, I'm really never been a purist in anything. I, I really don't like purists. Uh, there's a time, there really is never actually a time for maintaining a purist unless you wanna get top dollar for your item and you want it restored to factory. Uh, I don't want this thing restored to factory. I plan on doing whatever I want with it. As y'all know, I'm a young guy, so uh, not very many people are doing this. Um, and be easy on me. Uh, I'm trying to learn as I go here because I quite enjoy this stuff better than sitting on my phone or or doing things I shouldn't be doing so uh, uh, instead I'm learning for the future hopefully inspire some other young people and all that good stuff but 
We're gonna get the starter and the generator out now. Um, uh, this thing does have some new components. I seriously doubt that even though it's painted red, uh, 1950s, I need to, I, I joined a combine forum. I need to post the serial number and see what year this actually was from. Uh, but you got, so let's say 19, let's say 55, 65, 75, 85, 95, 2005, 2015. So that's, that's 67 years old. This tractor roughly is if it's a 55. So um, it's not in a young piece of machinery. So it's like three times my age. I'm 21, so. Uh, this thing is very old, so um, I would say a lot of this stuff has been replaced at some point. It definitely needs filters, for sure needs filters, but we're just going to start here and I'm hoping maybe the videos will take off and uh, we'll be able to get some viewership, maybe just start generating some income. Uh, I'm not relying on that, although I am very, very much so hoping on it, not only for income, but I really would like my videos to get out there because um, I think young people need more videos like this. Uh, Feels like we've kind of been left to the dogs, <laughs> but we're gonna jump right into it. Way off. The nice thing about this, unlike the truck, um, vehicles are much harder to get into spaces. This thing is just, it's just, it's not really that bad, honestly. It really isn't that bad. It's just a lot of taking bolts off that might not come off. So uh, I'm gonna bring you guys around. I'm gonna hop up there and, well, I'm gonna need a step stool to work on this thing, but I'm gonna see if I can get that starter off. Alrighty, Ron, the bolts on the back of the thing are 9 16 Pardon the little sun dots but um there is three of them i was able to pull the uh the um this thing is very hard to stand on as well i was able to pull the uh oh boy oh boy i'm working on a stinging combine man i don't know why but maybe i'm meant to be a farmer i don't know I don't know. You know, there's something to be said in this world for having so many avenues. It's really hard to choose, but I think farming probably takes the cake. Maybe. This thing is definitely more interesting to work on than a, uh, than a, uh, car. What the heck? What? Oh, 11 sixteenths. My bad. It's 9 sixteenths. Okay, I see. Hold on. Oh, I'm already cramping. Uh, all these bolts are the same length. I'm getting dirty already. Boy, it feels good to get on another project. That I, I mean, I got lots of projects, but it feels good to get on a, there's something to be said for big projects. I don't know why. Maybe that'll be easier to get out from the other side. I mean, you guys are not tall enough. I need to get a little, like, gigantic, uh... Okay, hey everybody. Come here. Ouch. You're getting finger smashed. Alrighty, so here it is right here. I don't know if you guys can even see me, but um, it's got a name right here. I should have brought a squirt bottle with me. I got a rag here. It's an auto light, auto dash light. Y'all be surprised if it's a cold day, you can just breathe on stuff and it will, it'll actually help clean it quite a bit. I've been surprised multiple times. We got, uh, ugh. We got a Autolite MZ 4051-9P. You guys can see that. Also, if my filming is trying, starting to kind of increase, I am trying to film better. Um, ooh, this assembly is sticky. That's definitely gonna need some grease. It's pretty, pretty uh, sticky in there. 
So you got your gear. I'm assuming this is six volt. It's pretty dirty, but there's no other identifying numbers on it. You know what we could do? Let's see if we can uh, take this back housing off real quick here. I'm not gonna strip it down super far out here, but I do wanna strip it down and see like, is there carnage kind of thing? Oh, I felt it pop. I don't know if I need to take this off. Honestly, I'm not uh, not entirely sure. If worse comes to worst, I do have a small socket adapter uh, flathead, so and a whole bunch of other adapters, so I could I could wrench on it a lot more than just the turning force of my hand always been something that I've okay this has to come all the way off oh 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 it's bad <laughs> oh it's bad inside there <laughs> oh man well that's okay y'all know I've dealt with bad inside stuff before so oh my good night dude she is rough on the inside she needs blown out and washed Is there a specific way this goes on? It's got some dents in it. I see the letter L. The letter L goes, and then there's R. So left goes directly opposite the solenoid and R is on the top triangle of the bolts. There and there. Oh. Oh, oh, are you gonna give me it? Ooh. Ooh. What are we getting stuck on? Captain. Let's flip it over. Okay, what I'm gonna do is, uh, how many of these is there? Three of them? Four of them. And I only need to take this guy off, which is not looking to be very easy. No, oh, it just came off. I'll just use the other ones for reference. So, ooh, on my back. You got your uh, brushes here. Dude, focus. You're supposed to be known for your focusing camera. So you got your brushes here. I took those two out that go into the motor. Uh, one of these little springs came off. This thing, however, does not want to come out. And I'm not sure entirely why. Golly, it looks rough inside there. Okay. Coffee should never be on the table when it's a not sturdy table. Um, is that chat? Is that, uh, so, yeah, I'm assuming that is. Cause this thing is a harvesting machine. There's a lot of, uh, um, these aren't metal shavings. There's a teeny bit, but not like, a lot of that stuff that's up in there, you guys can't even, you can kind of see it. A lot of that stuff is, uh, um, uh, it is, uh, like chaff from wheat and stuff, so. Set that there. Okay, so this piece comes out the front. So this is called the armature, I do believe. It's got a fatty spring on it. Uh, there is a washer on the back that does come off. Okay, don't want to lose that. Put that over here. Down in there. 
So it engages. Um, yeah, so the issue is it wasn't swinging out. Um, it was probably just spinning like this because as you can see, it's not uh, returning. Now I don't know if the engine assists in it returning, but it definitely will get clean because it's pretty gooey and gummy in there. Um, what I am curious about is that's not a bearing that well it is a bearing it's a fixed um it's like a just it's not a bearing it's like a uh uh what do you call it um then it's not a bearing they're a flat seal that or they're a flat bearing that has no roller rollers in it i can't remember what those are called this one on the other hand looks like it might actually be a no, no, it's the exact same deal. It's just a fixed brass. It actually looks in really good condition, too. These look to be in pretty good shape. I completely forgot what they're called. And then you got inside this guy, you got the... Uh, it's got four of them. These are the coil fields. Those look pretty beastly, dude. I don't know if those would burn up with this thing putting out 12 volts, there's four of them. Seems like on all the videos I've seen, there's only two, or the kits you buy online, it seems like there's only two. This thing's gonna need, this shirt is getting greasy. Whatever, dude. That's what that's what good clothing washing is for. Because as far as I'm seeing, while it's dirty, it's actually not, you know, at the end of the day, dirty's not that huge of a deal, it's worn that you wanna be worried about. So, um, I'm hoping this thing will, oh, uh, I gotta take that off, where's my, like that, it's got a crush washer, that is still crushable, no way, interesting, alrighty, y'all can definitely see the generator right there, so the generator is used to tension the belt as well, um, I didn't realize that, but, we're gonna go ahead and get it off. It looks like it's got two wires going to it. One goes from the voltage regulator to the, maybe it's got more than two, but one goes from the voltage regulator to the body of the generator. And then the other white wire heads down into the wiring loom up to the front. I would assume that probably measures amps or something weird, but uh, it looks like it's two bolts, one front and back on the bottom, and then one up top to tension the belt. So we'll go ahead and get that off and disconnect those wires. All right, everyone got the uh, generator off. Not gonna lie, it was a pain in the butt. Uh, one of the bolts was not in the best shape, despite hitting it with some uh, some blasts or some penetrating oil. We're gonna go ahead and take this regulator off. It's gonna be three flatheads. I see it. You know, I wish this thing set on it, whether it was 6 or 12 volts. Um, so, for reference, gosh, there is no reference on this darn thing. Um, the one, there's one on one side and three on the other. The one on the one side goes with the logo. So, judging by the design of this thing it looks like this is your ground through that which because it grounds and goes here so i would assume that's yeah that's the ground of the of the thing and it's also it's also got suspension ah uh, yes um you know, honestly, doesn't look too bad inside. It looks pretty decent. Too bad it's a uh, six volt, I think. It doesn't look hot. 
Doesn't look that bad at all. Do I know how this thing works? Not really. I don't think I can get shocked by it, so. GJK-7001-C dash dash and then it's gonna, it says 10P. What I was looking for on this generator was whether or not it's made in Canada, Ontario. Oh, I wonder if the other one was Ontario as well, the starter. Maybe I got that screwed up. I was looking to see if it had the generator's outputs on it. This has a bearing, <clears throat> a real bearing. Oh, she's rough inside. <sighs> she's rough. I wonder if this front housing will now come loose. Someone kept it oiled. Someone for sure kept this machine oiled. This is buttery. I mean, like new bearing smooth. That's amazing. And it's got a little bit of play. Not bad though. Maybe a 16th. Now I can get this off. All right, everybody, it's the next day. Um, I've spent basically the past day and a half cleaning uh, and, and fixing up the alternator, or the generator and the starter. Um, they're both pretty dirty and I ended up taking the generator down to see what a quote would be from the local person here in town and uh, to get it converted to 12 volts and he was like, yeah, that'll be $300. So not happening. Uh, what I ended up doing was uh, my dad had a uh, 12 volt coil off a VW Rabbit and I have a Mustang uh, voltage regulator 12 volt. So. We're gonna see if I can get this thing to work. I don't know if it will. I don't even know if the voltage regulator is good, um, but uh, we'll see. The uh, generator is polarized and was tested, uh, and it did spin. So I don't know it, if it's putting out voltage. We put a drill on it, and it wasn't putting out that much voltage. But I'm just gonna stick it on here and see what happens when we get it all done up. I'll show you guys though the um, uh, generator and the starter. Uh, and I want to say something about the starter. Uh, I, I very much so doubt that 12 volts is going to break this starter. Maybe on a car starter uh, for a 6 volt system it's different. Uh, the starter for this Massey Ferguson and this Continental engine is, uh, it, it's very, it's probably the most beefy starter I've ever seen. It's, it's a huge starter, so I'll show you guys that now. Alrighty, so here's the starter right here. Uh, as you can see, not small. It's got uh, huge teeth, way bigger than Put it this way, the, the starter out of the uh, 351 modified in the 77 is way smaller than this thing. So uh, I'm gonna say that thing's fine. Here's the generator, so uh, just bear with me here. Um, I ended up making a bracket and putting this Motorcraft um, voltage regulator on here. You got keyed ignition, ground, and battery 12 volts. You got the out here. This one is marked F and this one is A, so A goes here, and this one is the field. I believe the smaller one is always the field, so I'll just loop these back and have them go like this, like just like that. Um, I don't think it looks too bad. Uh, I also made little rubber grommets under there. You can kind of see them uh, to space that out so it doesn't short. Uh, this did take me a while to make because it was a little complicated, but um, all in all, uh, I saved a little bit of money. If this weren't to work, uh, I have another regulator I could try out of the 77, and if that didn't work, I'd go buy one. This is the 6 volt. As you can see, it has a cover, and I did have this part, and it's very beefy inside, so I don't know how I'd burn this up. Uh, I mean, obviously, it's probably going to be restricted, but uh, it still is very serious. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and stick this on and stick that on, and wire everything up and I will see you guys when these are both in. 
Alright everybody, so some of this wiring is in good shape, some of it's just got rusty ends. Uh, this is the control panel, the key is right here. Um, so what I need to do is take this off so I can see what went to the generator. There was one wire that went to the generator which is kind of weird, but um, I gotta pull this off and see what I'm dealing with. Ah, yes. No, no, no. There is a washer, crush washer. Something I'm noticing on this machine a lot is that they just used crush washers. Usually you're supposed to use a crush washer and a flat washer, but whatever. Oh, if this whole piece is one piece. Ew, so it's not not a small job taking that off. Huh. Well, it really needs to come off anyways because all that wiring in there is not happy. This right here bolts the... Um, uh, the valve body for the hydraulics to this is the mounting point for that so the the um, two hoses come in and the one hose goes down to the ram so you got like a feed and a return and then you have you have a I think you have like a feed and a return and then this is a feed and a return there may actually I'm not quite sure how that works there may be a return that goes a different way back to the pump. I'm not quite sure on that. Um, put those there. Okay, there's one there, a bolt there, and a bolt back there, and then two bolts here. Okay, this is all half inch stuff. No washer on that one. No washer on that one. And it's down position. Dude, I can't even get to it. Okay, looks like we're using the open-ended part. I hear it clicking, whoa. That I think had a washer. It did. Try that out from the other side, it looks like. I think I probably need to take that cotter pin out too. Clean, 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 come in. Okay, hopefully that's good enough to get it out. I don't know what I'd think if I was a lady and I saw some young 
strapping lad working on the combine. I'd be like, what the heck is he doing? Oh, no matter. Oi. Um, this darn throttle cable I don't think is going to treat us very nicely. And I need to get this uh, handle up here off. Oh gosh. I don't know if that is coming off. actually for me to be able to get up in there and uh, and do stuff sorry everybody I'm just kind of looking at this thing if that knob could come off because this is dirty I want to scrub this all right everyone wanted to bring in here uh, I ended up just taking the uh, compression pin thingy out of the hydraulic cylinder to get the handle out which went right there as you can see, there's probably not much, uh, probably not much goodies going on in the way of uh, connectivity, conductivity, whatever tivity. So I'm gonna pull these off and clean every single one of them. All right, everybody, just wanted to outro this video real quick. Uh, I didn't make an outro; I just continued on. I'm trying to get better at um, outroing and introing in certain points because I, I, the length in between intros and outros I could make videos that were like an hour and a half two hours long so I need to not do that but um other than that may the Lord bless you and watch over you in all your ways uh, in this crazy world uh and I will catch you guys in the next one peace out god bless be ready next it, it's getting insane it's uh let's just say it's uh it's getting insane <laughs> it's following the same path as the truck god bless See you next time.